This is our Disney News Hour, and many thanks for joining us with the news. I'm Shifar Aulako. Do stay with us. Now, Ethiopians from all walks of life flocked to Muscal Square here in the capital Addis Ababa yesterday to mark Ethiopian Day with colorful assortments. The event featured a panel discussion that brought together scholars, ministers, and President Sahla Wurgzode, who underscored Ethiopianism remains to be the doctrine held by every African nation. Suntayo Tamrat, tell you more on that. Residents of Addis Ababa together with their city mayor, senior government officials, celebrities and public figures were among the participants of a high-spirited Ethiopian Day event at Mescal Square. Former patriots said Ethiopia is the name of proud people that never kneels for any evil power. Another part of the event was a panel discussion on Ethiopianism that has gathered politicians, top government officials, army members, and historians among others. One of the panelists said Ethiopianism has been preserved with the greatest sacrifices of the lives of brave Ethiopian patriots. No one has conferred to us our freedom. We preserved it with priceless sacrifice for our blood and life. That's why we are remain forerunners to other states. It's for the sake of the first runs of this Ethiopianism that our patriots in uniforms are paying their priceless lives and blood. All the disputes over good and our strong desire to fill the dam is part of a scaled up version of Ethiopianism. This Ethiopianism cannot end somewhere. It instead is transcends to generations and passes through non-stop process of state building. That's why we are witnessing today on the ground with all Ethiopian sentiments when the nation is amid its troubles. That's why we always say Ethiopia shall live forever. Veteran politician Dima Nago, who presented paper on the event, asserted that Ethiopianism is an ideology that goes beyond subjects like politics, religion, ethnicity, and language. There are various identities which are revealed through ethnicity, language, religion, politics, and the like. But what ties all this up is Ethiopianism. This Ethiopianism needs to be fostered and reinforced by using advantage of what's currently happening in the country. Addressing panelists, President Sahalor Kazode, for her part, lauded Ethiopianism is a doctrine held by African brothers, not only by Ethiopians. Ethiopia will not Ethiopianism is what we inherited from our ancestors in past two generations. We have a multitude of values and assets that constitute our Ethiopianism. This has made us a great and strong people. Let me share with today a great feeling of our African brothers. I have made official visits to many African nations. The leader of a certain nation who was also a freedom fighter once told me how Africans see Ethiopia as their country and how Ethiopianism is a part of their nationhood. The leader said once in a Congress meeting, a member raised an agenda that Somalia had invaded Ethiopia's Ogaden region. And before he finished his remarks, another member of the Congress reacted questioning whether it was really Ogaden, which is a part of Ethiopia, which they consider a part of their nation. And the member went on saying Ethiopia is no more Ethiopia without Ogaden. So, this story asserts Ethiopianism is a doctrine held by African brothers as well. It's not a value monopolized by Ethiopians alone. Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed tweeted, The harmonized diversity, spirit of gallantry, unity and freedom that Ethiopians maintained have brought them together and entwined them in a strong bond. He emphasized that Ethiopianism is a strong value that has brought Ethiopians together despite the diverse cultures, languages, religions and thoughts among them. Let's now turn our attention to trending stories on Ethiopia over the past 24 hours. And I'm joined here in the studio by Alula Taklamara to bring us up to speed. Alula, thank you.
Thank you for having me. Sure. Now, what have you observed uh, when it comes to trending stories on Ethiopia over the past 24 hours? Uh, great. I have observed uh, three major news outlets uh, that have been majorly circulated on the social media over the past 24 hours. These are, uh, as we have been watching the news of Ethiopian Day, the yeah. Ethiopian National Day uh, was colorfully celebrated um, yesterday in the presence of high-ranking government officials, residents and uh, uh, different diplomats, mm. of course. And the second one is the Ethiopian Airlines uh, flight service uh, carrying uh, millions of doses uh, of uh, coronavirus to different countries in the world. And the third issue uh, here that have been uh, circulated on the social media in the last 24 hours is uh, Ethiopia has received over 100,000 doses of uh, COVID vaccines. Mm. So to begin with the Ethiopian National Day that has been celebrated colorfully yesterday um, in the presence of high-ranking government officials, it was really uh, an amazing event uh, combined by various events. Uh, the national anthem was uh, sung by the ma many Ethiopians here in Ethiopia. Of course, uh, Ethiopians who live abroad uh, were also attending the event uh, mm. in a very active manner. Uh, there were strong messages that have been delivered by those government officials. One of those messages were Eth being Ethiopianism or Ethiopianness is uh, an actuality or a truth. So finding the truth is the best way that has been given to this generation mm. and to the generation to come. Of course, today is also another uh, the service delivery day that has been designated as a September 7 has been designated as a service delivery day. Uh, ser service delivery day has been designated as to be celebrated today, mm -hmm. where uh, various uh, institutions, government uh, employees, uh, NGO workers, everybody has to deliver uh, a service in a very comfortable manner that target is uh, the national agenda. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so my second point is that Ethiopian Airlines has transported more than 50 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines to over 28 countries across the world. Oh. This is huge uh, or massive service Indeed. that the uh, Ethiopian Airlines has given, mm. irrespective of uh, flight restrict restrictions or border closures. Ethiopian Airlines is one of uh, the airlines, few airlines, that didn't quit transportation service, especially in the COVID pandemic, in the pandemic, uh, the yeah. global pandemic era. Mm -hmm. So many express appreciation on this achievement. Uh, it, it has transported this amount of uh, vaccine to different countries. So this is a great achievement and uh, it got, it received uh, appreciation. In connection to this, the Ethiopian uh, Minister of uh, Ethiopian uh, Health or Health Ministry received uh, 100,000 vaccine doses from uh, which was financed by the World Bank. Mm. Uh, the Minister, Dr. Liat Abdesa, thanked the international community, uh, particularly the World Bank, for financing this uh, kind of donation. All right. Uh, and uh, these are all the major issues of. Uh, past 24 hours. Indeed. Uh, Alula, thank you so much. Thank you. Sure. Overall macro stability is, is uh, by and large, I think, on a promising track, except uh, inflation. What is the solution for that? It's not a question of increasing the supply simply by production, but by doing proper intervention in the marketing system. Financial liberalization is only reserved for, for Ethiopians or Ethiopians by birth. Liberalization has been kept as like selling the country. We have seen recently what's happening in this economy. No one gave us a support. What I am hearing, 
and what you are hearing today, the outsiders, the Westerners, rather are trying to kill us. I can use this term, killing us, okay, in all aspects. Even we didn't mention on the inflationary process, there might be some sabotaging behind it, coming from multinational corporations, okay? It is only when we are strong in our economic base, like Ethiopians, that we can fight and that we can stand them. If you are dependent on them, you will die eventually. You are still watching at this news hour. Now, some Western and European countries have exhibited meddling in the internal affairs of Ethiopia while the nation is undertaking law enforcement operation against the TPLF terrorist group. Talking to ETV English, scholars say some Western countries are now busy pressurizing the incumbent by flaming political conspiracy across the country. Habtam Ashagri presents the story as follows. Well, let's bring you some breaking news now out of Ethiopia's Tigray region. A ceasefire between government forces and rebels has been agreed to in the capital, Makele. In collaboration with Amnesty International, exposed the horror of a massacre perpetrated by Ethiopian soldiers in the mountains of the Tigray region. Now CNN has obtained and verified new images confirming the identity of the... Since last November, the government of Ethiopia has been trying to restore constitutional order across the Tigray regional state. Amidst of its interventions on the Renegade Group, the incumbent has foreseen loss of challenges from within and outside directions, on which is the meddling of Western governments in the internal affairs of Ethiopia. During the course of the law enforcement oppression in the Tigray region, Western countries have worked hard to pressurize the incumbent by flaming political conspiracy across the country. After the TPLF brutal attack in the northern command of Ethiopian National Defense Force that has been residing over the past three decades in the state of Tigray, Ethiopia has never seen any condemnation from a single foreign country. Non-exclusive interview with Ethiopian English and a scholar and independent journalist said as follows. If the U.S. government has uh, altered its approach, then it could be a good sign. Otherwise, if it is a kind of a continuation of what uh, they were attempting in the previous uh, time, uh, then uh, we consider it as, 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 as wrong because the Ethiopian government has been repeatedly telling them uh, that it's operating the law enforcement operation in the, in the northern Ethiopia. The TPLF uh, has been uh, trying to destabilize the country and they, they are aware of it, they know it. But repeatedly, they are trying to, uh, I mean, subjugate the Ethiopian government. The TPLF had committed several human rights violations, uh, committed atrocities against the entire population of Ethiopia, the entire Ethiopian population. But it went beyond that. It uh, served as um, uh, the bulwark of the uh, Western powers in their uh, doing their dirty, dirty jobs in Somalia for example, and in South Sudan, destabilizing these countries and doing their dirty job. To alleviate such unnecessary foreign intervention, were go highlighting solidifying bilateral relations with other sovereign nations instrumental. Some Western governments go beyond the limit by rejecting international laws and norms. After the law enforcement oppression and the unilateral ceasefire agreement made by the federal government, that PLF gangs committed various atrocities, the killing of innocent civilians, displacements, mass looting, war aggression in the state of Afar and Amhara. The rest of the world, except few countries, never ready to blame the TPLF gangs. They killed a lot of children in the Afar region that they are destabilizing, uh, for instance, Amhara areas, and uh, occupying uh, the UN registered uh, um, site this Lalibela and so forth, all these things deserve condemnation, but they did not. The Western powers are known uh, to ignore whatever human rights violations, um, whatever atrocities are committed by any 
forces as long as these forces are on their side or their allies. Uh, that is documented very well throughout, throughout the 27 years that TPLF dominated the Ethiopian central government. Throughout these 27 years, According to Umar, some foreign countries have exhibited stretching hands into neighboring countries to orchestrate political conspiracy against Ethiopia. What I see happening in Khartoum, in the politics of uh, Sudan recently, is it is becoming a weapon of the U.S. government uh, because it happens to be next door to Ethiopia and it happens to, be a, uh, to have a borderline, very strategic borderline, uh, that would give a lifeline to TPLF if that borderline uh, happens to open for TPLF. Every sovereign nation has its own national interest. This national interest may have a negative energy for those developing nations like Ethiopia. Cementing national unity, solidarity and togetherness is an incredible solution to control this negative energy. Now, Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister of Ethiopia, Demekra Mekonen, had a discussion at his office with Mr. Jean-Pierre Lacroix, United Nations Under Secretary General for Peace Operations. On this occasion, the Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister expressed the significant role of the Ethiopian peacekeeping force in the UN and raised the long-standing history of Ethiopia's peacekeeping mission. He expressed Ethiopia's disappointment at the recent letter sent by Senator Bob Menendez to the Secretary General of the United Nations, which failed to portray the contribution of Ethiopian peacekeeping forces who are serving to maintain peace and security under the blue helmet. The Macau finally affirmed Ethiopia's continued support to the UN. The UN Under Secretary General for Peace Operations has appreciated the role of Ethiopia in the UN peacekeeping mission and expressed the interest to extend the long-standing relations between the UN peacekeeping missions with Ethiopia in the future. Ethiopian Airlines has responded to the wrong article appeared in Sudan news agency, that's Sunam, regarding shipment of weapons to Sudan. Sunam reported on Sunday the shipment is being investigated by a committee tasked with dismantling the government of former President Omar al-Bashir, who was toppled in April 2019 after a popular uprising. The weapons had arrived in Ethiopia from Moscow in May 2019, the committee found. According to Ethiopian Airlines, the shipment of weapons to Sudan is a legal and commercial transportation of hunting guns with all proper documents of the shipper and the consignee. Ethiopian Airlines says all the documentation that proves the legality of the shipment, including a letter from the Sudanese Ministry of Foreign Affairs, are provided and proved. The Ethiopian Ministry of Health has received its first dispatch of 108,000 doses of vaccine through Africa CDC. These shipments are said to have a pivotal contribution to address vaccine for the population of Ethiopia. Kasa Unchani reports. 
The African Union, AU, through the Africa Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Africa CDC has worked with the African Vaccine Acquisition Trust to secure 12,000 doses of the Johnson & Johnson single-shot COVID-19 vaccine for the African Union Commission staff, AU, embassy staff and their dependents. Dr. Liat Adessa, Ethiopian Minister of Health, received first shipment of 180 thousand doses and acknowledges various principal partners including WHO. I would like to say first I'm extremely pleased today uh, to be here to receive the first tranche of uh, the three million Johnson & Johnson doses that Ethiopia is procuring through Africa, the ABAT mechanism by Africa Union and Africa CDC and uh, Africa Exim Bank financed by the support of the World Bank. Today's uh, additional doses of vaccines for Ethiopia will really play a huge role in accelerating our efforts to vaccinate our population, especially the priority population that's vulnerable in this pandemic. The minister said the vaccine is very critical to Ethiopians. It could help to vaccine more than 60% of the population, adding it could help to boost the health system to be sturdy. We mitigate and continue our efforts to mitigate this COVID-19 pandemic. As was mentioned by our pre previous speakers, for the efforts to really increase the vaccine access and vaccine equity, the Africa Union and Africa CDC have established this ABAT mechanism or the Africa Vaccine Acquisition Task Team that has been working hard to, uh, with a bold vision of achieving up to 60% of the continent to be vaccinated in a short time in collaboration with many partners. And we are really pleased that this uh, work has already started in many countries and now Ethiopia is also uh, part of this uh, initiative. And we have been of course collaborating with the Africa CDC in many platforms in this fight against the pandemic uh, since the pandemic initiated and even before that in really having a strong public health response system in the country and I would like to acknowledge and appreciate the partnership we have with the Africa CDC and the Africa Union in terms of uh, enhancing our health system resilience and a uh, lot of collaborations have been done in, in, uh, with our Ethiopian Public Health Institute and uh, the Minister of Health overall in the health system and we do hope this will uh, continue to grow and this ABAT platform is not just only about acquisition of vaccines I mean through procurement systems but also is looking at strongly uh, to collaborate with different partners in enhancing local manufacturing in the continent. During the occasion, Africa CDC Director Dr. John Walcom, the arrival of the vaccines and hand it over. The shipment alongside the Ethiopian Minister of Health. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine was selected for this first pool procurement for a single-shot vaccine, which could make it easier and cheaper to administer. Now moving on, the 27th Ethio Djibouti Joint Border Administrators and Commissioners meeting was underway at Arta, a town in Djibouti. The meeting mainly focused on major areas comprising border trade and security, immigration and movement of people, human trafficking and irregular migration, transport, customs and illicit trade, human and animal health, as well as issues of agriculture and livestock. During the meeting, the two sides vowed to continue their engagement to curb the illicit activities across their shared border and ensure the efficient and effective movement of goods and people across Ethiopia-Djibouti border. And finally, the fate of Guinea's President Alpha Conde is unclear after an unverified